All right, all right. Thank you, guys. Oh, man. So anybody else here, uh, other than me, have less money than when you were 11? <laughs> it's sad. It's a sad state of affairs. You ever gotten to the point you're so broke, you look at your balance and you just start laughing? Like, it's, it's just a joke. But the other day I went to the ATM, I was like, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I actually turned to the guy behind me, I was like, hey man, do you want my pin number? <laughs> it does not make any difference either way. I can't even get the money out. <laughs> it's in therapy for years, I can't, uh, I can't afford it anymore. Anybody else here? need therapy, you just can't afford it at all? <laughs> this is my strategy. Found a way to get it for free. It works like gangbusters. It won't cost you a dime. Free therapy. You just start setting up job interviews. <laughs> Every couple weeks. Because they ask about you. That's it, that's the whole thing. I mean, you won't get the job. But you will get that crap off your chest. Like the other day I went in and gave my old resume, they're like, so Nick, tell me about yourself. I'm like, oh God. I'm so messed up, man. Like, what, what are you going to bring to our team? I'm like, certainly not confidence, that's for sure. <laughs> Went out the window a long time ago. Goodness. Goodness. Big football fan, I love football. I just, I don't understand how people, how guys get so mad at the games. How do you, how do you get that mad at people who wouldn't even let you buy them a drink? How do you get that mad? Like, some of that anger has to be just projection, right? Some of it has got to be about themselves. Wouldn't it be cool if you could go to a football game but scream about the stuff that's really bothering you? <laughs> if you were at a game, it's like offsides. Nobody remembered my birthday today! <laughs> I found a really weird toe fungus! You know, wouldn't that... I'd go to every game. I wouldn't miss a game. Oh, in 16, I'm there. And so I'm married. I'm a little tired of people in my generation, and it is just my generation. People getting married halfway around the world in a town for no real reason, and it costs you 10 grand to go see them get married in that town. I have no idea. These destination weddings. People would just come up to you out of the blue like, hey, you know what? We're going to get married in Africa. And I'm like, I'm not going to go. <laughs> I'm going to defriend you right now. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm doing instead of going to your wedding. Couple, one of my best friends is like, hey, we're going to get married in Brazil. I'm like, I'm sure that's gorgeous, but why do you want me to spend four grand in all my vacation days just to watch the end of our friendship? I don't know why I have to do that. <laughs> you know, I could Skype in. You know, I don't have to go, you know. I'll go. I'll, I will go, but if I'm going to go that, down there to go to a wedding, I'm going to give them a wedding present that they can't get back through customs. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> If you're going to make me go down there, I'm like, hey, congratulations. I hope you guys have a nice life together. Here's an ivory-plated revolver. <laughs> <laughs> stuffed with cocaine. <laughs> you want to get married in Brazil? You can stay there. Good luck with the dogs. And the gift registries are ridiculous now. I mean... We didn't have one, but I don't even understand why, wedding, uh, why married people even need presents. Why do they even need, why do the married people need presents? They just had a party. They're in love. They're fine. You know who needs presents? People getting a divorce. They're the ones who need a gift <laughs> registry. We need a divorced registry. That's fair. I think that plays well for everybody. Some guy gets kicked out of his house, maybe never see his kids again. Probably sleeping on his mom's ottoman. You don't think he'd like, like a George Foreman or a lamp or something? <laughs> Some sweatpants, you don't think you'd appreciate that? 
Some of those socks you put on your hands in the winter, you know what I mean? I think he'd like it. It just makes more sense. Your friend calls you, he's like, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, it's over. She kicked me out. Yeah, it's for real. Yeah, but I'm registered at Target. <laughs> in Sky Mall. <laughs> I've had my eye on that crossbow. She wouldn't let me have it, but I'm getting it now. I'm tall, I'm 6'4", uh, wear a size 14 shoe, um, exactly. Um, <laughs> every time I've ever said that to anyone, whoever I'm talking to is like, man, size 14, you must have a huge package, every time. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what, I'm just here to buy some shoes. I don't know why you had to bring my body into any of this. I love, I love it when you're shoe shopping and you're like, you know what, I'm a nine and a half. I've been in a nine and a half for 20 years. And they're like, you know what, we're the professionals here. We're going to decide. Can you put your foot into this medieval raccoon trap for me? <laughs> oh, it's kind of floating over the side. We'll give you some size seven girls Tevas and we'll see if you can work it out. <laughs> I, uh, I think if you're dating, I'm sure there's some people dating here right now. I think if you're dating, you gotta test the waters as soon as possible. I, girl, guy, doesn't matter. I think the best way to do that, to test the waters, is next romantic situation. Just whisper something very awkward and see how they react tell you everything. Not long ago, I was with my now wife. We we're about to go to bed. She was like, hey, say something to me romantic. I was like, all right. I wish you were a man. <laughs> but she didn't miss a beat. She turned it right around. She's like, I wish you were a man. <laughs> and then I proposed. So it worked out. It worked out. And it works, but that works. I don't care who you are. And it works because whispering is like inherently creepy. There is something very creepy about it. You can say something to someone in a normal voice and they think nothing. You whisper the same thing, very weird. Go up to a stranger outside, as long as it's a normal voice, be like, I love kids. <laughs> They'll be like, oh, you should be a teacher, you know, whatever. But you cannot go up to some mom in a CVS and be like, Psss. I love cats. Yes, yes, Ice House, make some noise, make some noise, Ice House. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. How's everybody doing? My name is Jamal Doman. Uh, I'm a comedian, which means I'm broke. Uh, yes, I am broke. You ever wake up in the morning and think you're a special type of broke? I woke up this morning, I'm like, I'm like broke to the third power. I'm like a new type of broke. Because I know I'm broke. My bank mailed me a letter, said I bounced a money order. I said, send cash next time. <laughs> you know, if you're broke, you got broke friends. Am I right? Anybody got their broke friends? Anybody got that friend who don't have a car, so they love to ride with you all day? <laughs> Everybody got a friend, he ride with you all day. But at the end of the day, you be trying to give him hints that you're trying to drop him off, he don't get the hints. You be like, oh man, I'm tired. I'm about to go home, take a sleep. I'm gonna roll with you. I'm gonna play PlayStation while you take a sleep. I'm gonna roll with you. <laughs> Oh huh, man, I gotta go get my mother from work. I'ma roll with you. I ain't see your mom in a while. How's she doing? Your mom doing good? I'ma hang out with you. Oh huh, man, I'm about to go spend some time with my girlfriend. I'ma roll with you. How's sister doing? Her sister still look good? I'ma roll with you. You know I've been trying to get with her sister. 
We ain't got to get smart on them. Oh, man, I'm about to go to the gas station and fill up the gas. Well, drop me off at my mama house. Drop me off at my mama house. <laughs> Pick me up after you fill up the tank. <laughs> Put your hands together for safe sex. Put your hands together for safe sex. Yes. Wear your condoms. 2006, wear your condoms, please, because you can die from having sex. Am I right? You can die from, ain't that scary? You can die from having sex. That's why I'm careful. I'm very careful. I don't take no chances at all. Yeah, matter of fact, I got a condom on right now. <laughs> I do everything with a condom on. <laughs> I do everything with a condom on. I watch a porno movie with a condom on. <laughs> I don't know who rented that VCR tape before me. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I was walking through Beverly Hills the other day, and I overheard these two women talking about where they were going to summer this year. Summering, like it's a verb. And you know what those women look like. They're all plumped and plucked and nipped and tucked. And I overheard one of them say, Bentley and I are going to take Bentley Jr. and Mercedes to St. Thomas to summer. And then we're going to go to St. Barth, St. Martin's, and St. John's. We're doing all of the St. Islands. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, OK. The only place that I'm going to be summering is when I run through my neighbor's sprinklers holding a can of Tecate. <laughs> all right, I'm lucky if I get one afternoon off to hit the YMCA pool and swim with all the inner city kids who wear their snorkel masks and stare at my butt underwater. Oh, that's my summer. But, you know, rich people are always reading, like, fancy magazines, you know, like Departures and Vanity Fair. Every other page is stuff I can't afford, like Cartier Diamonds or trips to Fiji. I mean, the only thing that I'm flipping through is the Vaughn Circular, searching for a half-off coupon for Herpesin. Yeah, that's right. But I don't want you guys to worry. It's actually not for me. It's for the people I plan on infecting, so. Yeah, so depressing. Life can be depressing. I'm getting a lot older. I mean, I know maybe some of you are like, oh, come on, you're not that old. But I'm, you know, there's a difference between 20s and 30s. And, you know, I, I'm having a hard time, like, going to the clubs these days, you know, with my friends. Because I will put on an outfit that I think is, like, really sexy, you know, some, like, hot hip top that I spent all day searching in the racks at Kohl's for. <laughs> and I will roll on up into that club, you know, and I, I step inside and it's wall-to-wall -wall skank, okay? I look like Laura Ingalls from Little House on the Prairie. I mean, seriously, their shirts are like and then their skirts are like and their underwear is like I don't know where it is, okay? I, I feel like an 80-year-old woman with a walker. I'm like, excuse me, girls, I've got to get to the bar. Yes, bartender, I'd like an insure with a twist. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Move it. It's depressing. My life's depressing. Yeah. So, um, I went to, like, my least favorite place today, the Home Depot. Oh, I don't, I really don't like that place. I mean, they never have anything in my size. You know, except maybe the guy who works in lumber. He's pretty hot. But, um, I don't know. I just, what depresses me is driving past all the jobless illegals on the way in. It's like a sad mariachi band with no instruments. <laughs> so sad. Can they really get a job that way? I mean, just standing outside of the place that they want to work? Because if that's the case, I'm gonna go head on over to Paramount Pictures tomorrow, near Bronson Avenue, gate 12. Maybe they'll realize that they're one movie star short. I can just hear them talking about it inside. Hey, Charlie, we're missing a movie star. Go see if there's a dame outside the gates that wants to work on this picture we're making. Someone with a lot of pizzazz who'll really knock my socks off. Cha-cha-cha. <laughs> That's how I like to think people in the motion picture industry talk. And then I would have to respond, 
Hey, Mr. Producer Man, I'm your girl. I'll work for scale, bring my own lunch to set, and do full frontal. How's that for a deal? I'll let you know how it goes. Send you a postcard. Um, but yeah, so I cruise around the Home Depot, and I just think I'm never going to find a man in this light. The fluorescent lighting, it, it just, I look so unattractive. And they have 3,000 different types of lights there. Just install a couple of dimmers, you know? And the only guy who ever wants to help me is this 150-year-old man with two yellow teeth and more lines on his face than on Lindsay Lohan's glass coffee table. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I swear to God, he looks like the Crypt Keeper. He's like, are you sure you can handle this power too, little girl? It's mighty powerful. <laughs> He scares me. He does. So uh, after I went to Home Depot, I decided to head on over to Noah's Bagel because I'm like, oh, I might as well, I'm depressed. I might as well eat like, you know, the equivalent of 10 pieces of bread. So, but I can't stand when like kids are in there and the parents are so run down and exhausted that they just let their kids kind of go crazy. And, you know, they're running all over the place and they're trying to talk to me and I'm just standing online trying to get my bagel, you know? And this little girl comes up to me and she's like, I have a dog and her name is Shelby and I like to brush her hair. Do you have a dog? And I leaned over and I looked into her little baby seal-like face and I said to her, yeah, you know what? I had a dog. And she got cancer in her spleen. And she died. We had to put her down. It was really depressing. So we joined Shelby while she's still alive. Kids, just keep them away from me, please. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about addiction shows, but I love them. I really do, I love intervention. There's something so satisfying about watching people's lives as they spiral wildly out of control. It makes me feel like the overachiever I've always wanted to be, you know? I actually have to thank the addicts for reminding me that I'm a relatively productive person, you know? I mean, I don't lie around on dirty mattresses all day, shooting up dope. No, sir, I lie around on clean mattresses, eating spicy Cheetos and watching my other favorite program, Lock Up. Oh, God, I love Lock Up. It's a reality prison show on MSNBC. And then afterwards, I like to peruse all the prison pen pals' websites and check out all the incarcerated men. Because if I can't find love at the depot, you know, maybe I'll find it in prison. And I, I actually have to say, there's, there's kind of a lot of really well-rounded men in prison, you know? I mean, okay, sure, some of them have made, like, hamburger patties out of their neighbor's children, but now they're pursuing a law degree so they can defend themselves in court. I mean, that's practically a lawyer, Mom. You know? I will admit, I had a little correspondence with this one prisoner. It's kind of weird. I wasn't even expecting to, but um, his name was Mad Dog, and... He wrote me like the most beautiful short stories and he would send me these little like chess pieces carved out of bars of soap and he did the most amazing mural on his cell wall using only his feces. So, yeah guys. But uh, I've been dating a little bit. It sucks dating when you're broke because you can't date beautiful girls. You know? <laughs> Gotta set up for girls more in my price range. <laughs> so I've been dating a lot of homeless ladies. It's easy to impress, you know. Because girls are tough to impress, you know I mean? They say girls know within five seconds of meeting you if they would sleep with you or not. And guys know even before meeting the girl. <laughs> and we would sleep with them. Oh, we got girls coming over, awesome. I got dibs, I'm on Tiffany. <laughs> but I try to keep it casual, you know. And, uh, I like asking girls to lunch, you know, because if you ask a girl to dinner, it just seems like you're trying to get a little action. So you say, hey, you wanna go to lunch? Cool, I'll pick you up at eight. <laughs> and I peel out. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I would like to have kids eventually, you know, I mean be cool, play sports and stuff. So I'll never, I'll never marry a vegan girl. 
Because if you get a vegan pregnant, you get a boneless child. <laughs> Can't play catch with that kid. <laughs> what am I gonna do, stuff him through the mail slot and everything? It's boring already. Uh, I, do, I do go to the gym a lot. Um, my gym's open 24 hours, which is cool, you know, but it just gets kind of weird, like late night. You know, because no one's there. Like, I was in the locker room, it was 3 a.m., and this guy was like washing his foot in the sink. <laughs> and like, I'm there, like I'm waiting right behind him, to wash my balls in that sink. <laughs> now I got athlete's balls. <laughs> so, man, it's the worst. They don't make cream for that, huh? <laughs> um, you guys on Twitter? Me, cool. Don't do it, man. There's no one to follow. Mariah Carey's tweets are getting saggy. <laughs> so stupid. Nah, but um, I don't know. I just uh, I stay in a lot of hotels, you know, doing comedy. And I just, I, it's weird when people are afraid of ghosts, cause you know, you never get punched by a ghost or nothing. Like, nothing ever happens. You just hear them go, ooh. And they're like, oh, God. They're all afraid of, like, their, their reputation or their name. You know, like, oh, dude, I want to stay at that hotel. So that girl got stabbed in the face, and now she stabs every face. Like, no, dude. That's not how it works. Like, that's why I want to I invest in a haunted hotel. She can give the ghost a better name. You know? Like, yeah, we're haunted. It's a handjob bandit. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Just leave your covers off. I'm broke. Anybody here broke at all? Anybody? Ooh, happy broke people. All right, man. Sucks being broke, doesn't it? Sucks ass. Does. One of the worst part of being broke, one that you do all day? Math. All day. And I suck at math, man. The world is like a math problem when you're broke, isn't it? You're like, all right, I got $16. I need that to last two days, so that's $8 a day. I want the Happy Meal, that's $2.75. I got to supersize it, that's $3.50. I need some gas. That leaves me with, um... Damn, I'm broke. You know you're broke when you have this thought 10 times a day. What illegal crap am I willing to do? <laughs> then I always hear the voice in my head, sell weed. <laughs> and everything makes you think about money when you're broke, doesn't it? Everything makes you think about money, you know? I was watching the news when they pulled Saddam Hussein out of that box in the middle of the Iraqi desert, you know? They pulled him out of the box in the news and they said they found him with 750,000 American dollars in his lap and a gun. If I found that dude, that story would have been slightly different on the news that night. <laughs> yeah, I found him, he had 14 dollars on him, man. Anybody got the credit still? Anybody got the credit card still? Anybody got the credit card still? Yeah, I do. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of pressure when it comes to having the credit card, isn't there? A lot of pressure. You ever been really close to your limit on your credit card? You go to the supermarket, you swipe your card for those 80 bucks worth of groceries, then you gotta wait them 15 anxious seconds <laughs> while that machine determines your fate in front of a line full of nosy They should let you put up a curtain like a voting booth, you know? <laughs> I'm paying! <laughs> and then you don't know whether to pray on the machine real hard or think of some kind of exit strategy just in case, right? <laughs> and when you get approved, you gotta be cool, don't you? You gotta act like you've been there before, man. When you get approved, you can't be like, Woo! <laughs> Suckers! 